This time on Road and Race, I fixed the rusty brake lines on my Boxster by learning how to make them myself. I mean, how hard can it be? In the last episode, I gave my Boxster a thorough inspection and identified problems with weeping coolant lines, an oil leak from the engine, and rusty brake lines. And it's these rusty lines I want to address in this video. First, there are these short lines that go from the flexi lines to the caliper, and the lines that go on the caliper themselves. And then there are the longer lines that run from the master cylinder to each front wheel, and the two that run all the way down the length of the car to the rear wheels. Now let's start with the short lines first. They're the most worn and the easiest to change. Handily, I've got some lines for the calipers spare from when I rebuilt my brake calipers on my old 986 Boxster all those years ago. Link in the description if you want to see me do that. They look like they'll fit, but I guess we'll see. To buy new brake lines from Porsche, it's about £20 for the front and £45 the rear. Although, if you saw my last video, one of the fronts has already been changed, so don't need to worry about that one. So you're looking at about £110 spend. Now, whilst that's not a huge amount of money, I've decided to learn how to make brake lines myself. Why? Well, because I like a challenge. No, because I like learning new things. Plus, it's new content for the show, isn't it? It keeps things interesting. So a big thank you to Seeley who have sponsored this video and provided everything I need flaring tool, pipe benders, fittings, pipe cutters, and brake line. Whilst buying all this kit does work out more expensive than simply buying the brake lines, it's a bit of an investment, isn't it? It means that I've got these tools going forwards and if I need to change brake lines on other cars, then I can. Plus, Porsche will only sell you steel brake lines and they will rust in the future was I bought copper nickel brake lines, which shouldn't rust. So there you go, that's good, isn't it? So before we start removing the brake lines, I'm just gonna depress the brake pedal to reduce the amount of brake fluid leaking out. This nut here that connects the short hard line to the flexi hose isn't budging. I put loads of penetrating fluid on it, left it to soak, but it's still not going. I put so much leverage into it that this bracket here, I don't know if you can see that, is bending. So what I'm gonna do, clamp off the hose, cut it here, because I'm replacing those anyway. I'll do this one bolt, which holds this bracket on, just here, and put it in the bench. Actually, I might, yeah, I'll put it in the bench. The reason I'm bothering to try and undo this is because I want to reuse this bracket. Um, obviously I've got the end of the vise now. Even with a um, flare spanner, um, the amount of force I'm putting on it is just rounding the nut. Now, my next option could be to use heat to release it, but that just seems like a bit of a faff. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bend this bracket out and then I'll be able to slide the whole um, brake line out. Uh, then I have to buy some of these new little retaining clips. Here's the CV flaring tool, fits nicely in your vise. The flaring tool makes both types of flare, so it makes the U uh, German DIN standard, the bubble flare, with this side of the, um, the, what this is, what is it? The kind of forming tool. And on this side does the um, SAE style or double flare. German car, I'll be using the German standard, the bubble flare. I'll just quickly show you the difference between the two types of flare. So on the left is a bubble flare, taken off my uh, Boxster. And this is a double flare. So if you don't know what you have in your car, just quickly compare them. We'll see the double flare on the right not flatter. And they just slot in like, slot, like so. Now to cut a section of brake line, just use a piece of string to 
measure out how much I need, mark it, then cut it. With that marked out, I'm just gonna bend out a bit of pipe. Use my cutting tool. So the way I use this, pop it on the pipe, tighten it up, twist, 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 twist. When it gets all loose, tighten it a bit more. Twist, 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 twist. Tighten a bit more. You get the, you get the idea. Pop it in the flaring tool and put the top of the former on. You can leave it sticking out there because there's a special tool. There are now two forming adapters. This one on the left will set the pipe level and then create a bubble flare. And these two are for SAE double flares. So we won't uh, use that just now. We'll use this one. So fit your adapter in here and line up the flat end with the pipe. Lock it off very gently. And then using the handle, just pull. And as you can see, it pushes the pipe. So it's in exactly the right place for flaring. See here? It's almost exactly the right space. So we'll tighten this down now so the pipe doesn't move. Slide this across. And then we'll just line up the holes and push in. And this will create the bubble flare. <laughs> There you go. So slide that off. Release that. Take this out. And here's the uh, bubble flare created. Then slide the ends on. Then flare the other end. Now it's a matter of bending the new pipe to match the old pipe. So here we go. So you see it bends just here. And I would say that's between 45 and 90 degrees. So pop in the bender if you're fit. Good. very slowly pull to bend it. So there's little markings here. So here's 45 degrees, here's 90 degrees. So we'll bend it up to about in between the 45 and the 90 marks. Okay, take it out. Check it. So now when we get to here, got a 90 degree bend. So I'm going to mark that and bend it. You can double check it before you bend just by popping it in. So as long as they start and end at the same place, you're good. And here's the new line loosely attached back onto the caliper ready for when the new braided hoses arrive. So there you go, I made brake lines. Uh, wasn't that difficult, really. Uh, takes a bit of practice, but you know, once you've got the right tools, it's kind of fairly straightforward. Takes a bit of practice though. Um, there's a big pile of uh, ruined brake lines uh, as I was kind of learning how to do it. Especially the rears, which have got quite a lot of bends in them. It takes a while to kind of get a feel for it. Now we need to decide what to do about the longer brake hard lines. Let's go around the car. Driver's side front, this brake hard line, although a bit dirty, shows no sign of rust. Brilliant. Passenger side brake line is showing signs of rust down here. Passenger rear line, no signs of rust. Rear driver's side, you can see a very small amount of rust. Just begin to start just there. Underneath the car, this midline section, which connects the rears 
has got a little bit of rust there. There's a little junction box here, so you'd only have to replace that kind of midsection. I don't know how long it goes. From the midline junction box, both rears are starting to corrode just there. When it comes to repairing the brake lines, I guess we've got three options. Replace the whole line, cut it and kind of patch on a replacement bit or um, just put some kind of protective thing on it, like maybe some uh, Lanogard, a kind of clear oil, stop it getting worse. So with the front passenger side and the first midline, could potentially replace the whole thing or patch it in. Um, for the two rear lines though, this bit could get tricky because one of them would need to drop the gearbox if you want to replace the whole line and patching it in looks bit tricky because there isn't that much access. Now, there is a kit from Rocket Racing that has like a flexible braided line for the rears, which could be an option. Um, saying that, I'm probably gonna drop the gearbox to fix the leak with the engine. So maybe I could get a hard line in then. Essentially, I've got a bit of thinking to do. So <laughs> please let me know in the comments what you think is best to do. Uh, I'm a bit of a perfectionist and um, I would prefer to get everything absolutely perfect, but it is much easier if I can just put like a protective coating on the rusty bits to stop it getting worse because I've got loads of Lanagard. Um, I'm just worried about the structural integrity of the brake line. If the rust has already kind of set in, is that something I shouldn't really be doing when it comes to brake lines? Anyway, right, <sighs> I'll have a think. Let me know in the comments. Anyway, if you do want to have a go at making brake lines yourself, uh, I'll put a link in the description box for all the Sealy stuff. And um, as always, thanks for watching.